Hello world, I'm Patricia and this is... Hi, I'm Dom. He is our... Campaign designer. Yes, and we're from Creative Assembly and we are about to do a Let's Play video on the campaign map. So do you want to walk me through what we're going to see today? Yep, well we're going to begin off just by showing you uh, the front end and introducing you to the factions that uh, we've been revealing over the past uh, past while. Sweet. Um, I mean this is the, the, the front end at the moment. Um, may may change a little before we, we release, but uh, you get the, the idea. Uh, we have our, our, our factions, or our major faction groups up top here. Uh, in this case we have Rome selected. You can see that we have the three families, the houses you can choose from. Cool. Now um, each major faction, that is Carthage or Rome, or each faction group, Eastern Empires, uh, Britannic tribes, Gallic tribes, successor kingdoms, and Germanic tribes, have a, a sort of a unifying faction trait. Now in the case of the Romans, they get uh, this little uh, experience gain rate boost to their um, uh, heavy infantry, mm. and they get some uh, some food production uh, bonus across their provinces. Everyone likes bread. Everyone likes bread and circuses. Yeah. Um, and then these remaining three traits are actually specific to whichever faction you know, or family you pick. Oh. So in the case of these guys, the Cornelia, we have uh, they're great administrators, uh, obviously important. Uh, statesmen within Roman politics, so you get a little tax bonus. Um, they were very fond of Greek people, so you have uh, this little Philhellenic diplomatic bonus with all Greek factions. Sweet. Um, but also they're a bit up themselves and don't care much for the little man, so mm -hmm. they get some uh, public order issues um, in, their, in their regions and get provinces. Some riots going. Now Julia, uh, which is uh, Caesar's house, of course, um, again they'll have the uh, Roman legions and the bread and circuses. Um, but they also have a Romanization bonus, uh, which means they can convert provinces to Latin culture a lot faster than uh, the other two families can. Uh, countered by their drawback, which is the fact that no one really likes them because they're so keen on crushing everyone's <laughs> family, uh, sorry, everyone's culture, that, um, yeah, they get some, some penalties to public order there. Mm. But they're also destroyers of barbarians. Obviously, Caesar was the guy who conquered Gaul. Um, we thought we'd give them a little bit of a boost when uh, conquering barbarian tribes. So that's their, their thing. Cool. Very cool. And then Junia, um, a family which was, uh, I believe, uh, one of the founders of the Republic, one of the people who ousted the king and, and started the, the Republic back in the day, was uh, from this family. And so they have this founding father's trait, which gives them um, a little bit of a public order bonus when they are... Um, when there's a strong Latin culture presence in their regions. Not very good on the political scene, so uh, they have a bit of a penalty. It makes it a bit harder to play as them if you're looking to make friends um, in other factions. But like I say, you have this little bonus to your own territory, so you're right. Not very good at making um, friends then. And they were sort of agrarian like reformists, so uh, they get a bit more cash from their farms, um, which is all good. And yeah, I mean, you can see something similar with uh, Carthage. We have the Hananids, the Maganids, the Barkids, and they all have similar things. They'll have two traits that are common to them, and mm -hmm. then the rest will sort of change. And now we have different <coughs> victories as well, right? We do indeed. Um, so everybody has a military, an economic, and a cultural. cultural. Yep. So That's here, pretty cool. Military, control X amount of settlements, maintain, maintain a number of units, research military technologies. In the case of the Carthaginians here, um, they have the, the additional fact they need to maintain naval units rather than just any old unit because they were known as a naval power, um, so that's very important. Um, and then uh, the economic victory, uh, trade relations very important, uh, you need to hold the resources, you need to be making a lot, mm. a lot of money uh, to win, research civil technologies. Um, so would you say some victories are harder to do than others? Or are they just diff styled differently? Well, I think it depends how your campaign evolves. Mm. The fact is you're not actually tied into any one victory condition. You're sort of playing along. You might be thinking, I'm going to crush my enemies. <laughs> and you're, you're going for it. And then along the way you think, well, I'm actually having a very hard time of it, but I'm making a load of cash. Yeah. And I have all these important resources and I've got these regions, so maybe I'll just consolidate and, uh, and you know, just see if I economic. can't win another way. Yeah, cool. Then, That's uh, cool. Are we going to take a look at the campaign map a Let's little bit? Let's take a look, yeah. We're going to look at a Carthaginian campaign we've got going oh, on. Good. I'm quite excited to play Germanic, actually. Why so? I don't know. I'm not sure. They, they actually have the coolest um, agent belongs to the Germanic. Um, their version of the dignitary is this staff bearer kind of 
bit of a witch really. And she oh, has this cool. awesome cloak with like skulls and feathers yeah. and she's awesome. See I really like their, their type of style. Uh, I don't know, it sounds a bit silly to pick a, a faction just from the style that they had. But well, I no, when, them. when this dignitary agent went in, I basically looked and I'm like, I would play this <laughs> just so I could walk around with her and you know. Here we are. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, get this control. We are looking at, uh, we're in Mauritania here. So uh, we sort of started all the way down here. This is Carthage, our capital. Cool. Uh, we also had it's a huge. colony here in uh, Lilibaeum and Caralis, as mm -hmm. well as a small colony all the way over in Kart Hadasht, which actually means Carthage as well, but we felt it might be confusing to have every like, several cities with the same name. Yeah. Now you'll Love notice, uh, or people out there, keen-eyed people will notice that, uh, actually no, you won't notice, because obviously we've been playing for a while here. <laughs> but um. Yeah, in the start pause, originally we gave this territory to Carthage. Um, oh, right. But uh, we kind of adjusted it now. So we, rather than giving them the entire north of Africa, um, they're an interesting faction to start with because they're spread out. So here they have Carthage, they're here, they're here, and all the way over in Spain. It's a lot to manage in very mm. different areas. You've got to really make sure you don't get overwhelmed by people. Run me through some of sort of the inner workings of a city, and maybe we can take a look at some of the politics, some of sort of the you know, behind the scenes things that may happen after a battle or before a battle. Well, what you're going to see here is uh, we have an entire province, the province of Magna Graecia, mm -hmm. um, which we've conquered both from the Romans and from the poor f fellows of Syracuse. Ah. And by selecting one of the settlements here, you'll see we bring up the entire uh, province panel. Um, if we didn't own all the settlements, uh, these would be sort of blocked out and we need to get uh, visual confirmation to be able to get, you know, sort of spy information on these, uh, these places and see oh, what's cool. inside them. But as you can see, we've got a lot going on here. Um, and we are currently running uh, an edict. Uh, this is the Stimulate Trade Edict, which gives a considerable boost to all your income from markets and uh, trade ports. Obviously, it's, uh, you can't run these edicts unless you own the entire province. So if I say go back to Carthage, I just have the one um. settlement. Um, I can max this out as much as I want, but unless I secure control of the other regions here, I'm not going to be able to just boost it with that extra bit of... Um, that extra sweetener that is yeah. uh, the, the edict. So here, obviously, we, we want to make money. Uh, we've been trying to rake it in, you know, persecute to, uh, prosecuting many wars. Uh, yeah, you need money. Uh, yeah. You can't kill people without money. Always need that money. But uh, what else we can do here? Um, we can rally the mercenaries. Now, the uh, Carthaginians were you know, very much known for their um, use of mercenaries. Their civilian flight force was not very good. Mm. Uh, lots of their own citizens were fighting in the Navy, but uh, yeah. Um, so if you want to add to your mercenary uh, units, you can, when you have an entire province, go to rally mercenaries. Ah, look at the little and, green. Uh, yeah. Everyone's yeah. celebrating. Well, in this case, they're celebrating. Uh, that's a population buff, uh, you okay. can see there. If it's a military buff, um, it'll have red confetti. Uh, and cool. if you're making lots of uh, money, uh, then it'll be a... Uh, Gold one. Uh, gold one. Yeah, so yeah, visual, visual confirmation, you set off your uh, edict, um, you get this confetti effect. Uh, you can see it across the map in other places as well, assuming other people are celebrating. But oh, I think these guys cool. have cause to celebrate. Now you'll see here that the, uh, the Etruscan League have actually kicked uh, the Romans out of Rome, uh -oh. which is quite a, uh, an unhistoric turn. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> hey, that's what the, this game's about. It's about creating the sandbox and uh, exploring it. Making, uh, your, own making your own history. Making your own history. Or letting yeah. the AI sometimes create its own history yeah. for you. <laughs> so here we are. We have the uh, the overview map, which I'm sure many of you have seen. Well, I'm sorry, we don't care about unrest right now. <laughs> what we care about is the map. Is the map. Yeah, yeah. many of you have seen this uh, in the E3 video, of course. The world is huge. Massive. And um, see, so these are all the people I know. Um, it's actually quite tragic because, uh, you know, you look at this list. Wow. See that Rome has been destroyed. Now there's lots of other people for us to kill, so it's not such a big deal. But, look at all those people. Yeah. So we've done a bit of exploring, we've sent some ships around, you can see that we've uh, got trade relations going on, mm. and by trading with people further afield, you you know, you reveal more and more. Uh, as in Shogun 2, you'd have to, you have to encounter a faction before you can actually deal with them. Yeah, and you've made some enemies as well. Well, of course. Not everyone uh, is uh, going to be on good terms. Like here, um, well, the Seleucids, for example. They have not much of a reason to like me. No. I'm dealing with their friend, uh, their enemy. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, you can see I've dealt with them in the past, so they have some uh, goodwill. But when combined with the fact that I'm basically trading and uh, being all pally with some of their worst enemies, yeah. it doesn't add up very well. 
Are you um, going to try to rectify that, or are you just going to... Well, they're a bit far away for the moment. Uh, I'm sort of concentrating on this area here. Not um, a problem. The minute I start moving across, or if they survive and make their way across and start conquering, uh, when we encounter each other, chances are it's going to start off very badly. <laughs> um, cool. And yeah, and as someone who is, you know, on good terms with you, we have the, the Keltiki. Or however you want to pronounce that. Um, <laughs> Cool. Well, thank you so much, Dom, for uh, taking me through this, and I guess uh, see you guys around. I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching.